You're listening to Swish Edition dot com. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're in a makeshift studio this week for the Swish Edition. <laughs> Um, we have a problem. Uh, Dale and I um, have a moving problem. And I don't think we've announced it yet. Uh, we've I moved, don't think we've ever talked about it. We've moved yet again. Um, ever since you've been listening to the show, we did the show from the basement of my house in D.C. Mm-hmm. We did it from a professional studio that we built um, over near Cobalt on in D.C. 17th Street in D.C., then we did the show from our studio at our first house in Vegas. Then we did the show from our house in Delaware. Mm-hmm. And then we did our house show from our ranch here in Vegas. And now we've moved yet again because we're really, really stupid. But we're still in Vegas. We literally are right across the street from our ranch. Mm-hmm. Um, ranch is still for sale uh, if you'd like to buy it. Uh, and you have horses. <laughs> come on. It's, uh, we have we have someone coming to see it. Uh, that someone saw it last night, so hopefully those people will buy it. Yeah, uh, we've been pretty good with the first people coming to look at the houses. They buy them. Been pretty lucky. We got cool houses, y'all. Anyway, so we're in a makeshift studio because we're like surrounded by cardboard boxes. And Dale's desk. Can, we, can you tell him about your desk? <laughs> <laughs> He's got one of those standing desks. So So, it's one of these desks that you can raise up and down so you can stand at it, which sometimes is comfortable to do that. Like it's powered. I had it at work one time. It was pretty cool. Yeah. (laughs) Somehow it got (laughs) fucked up in the move. It got fucked up and and it's 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 sliding and slanted like one leg considerably. One leg is about a foot lower than the other. Yeah. And even though we've been looking at videos and trying to fix it, we have not been able have to, not fix, been able to it fix it yet. And it's a shame because this is a it's really ex- nice and expensive also, It was desk. expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, so oh my we got to work on it. <laughs> Nobody cares about any of this. Um, go Knights Go. Uh, this will probably surprise a lot of people out there, but Dale and I have become hockey fans. It's so crazy. You kind of have to when you live here in Vegas. I mean, you always root for the home team, right? No matter where you are. But... Um, Actually, hockey is really fun to watch. Either, you know, I always thought it was boring to watch on TV, but we've been watching it on TV because we couldn't get tickets. It's one of the, the, the few sports, other than like soccer, where the, the there's just constant movement. It's, constant movement. It's not the. It's like basketball. It's, it's really fast. Yeah, it's it's not like football where you know you 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 have yeah. two hours of football, but you really only have like twenty minutes of play. Exactly, because they're constantly stopping. I, yeah. I've always I, I'm not a huge football fan. We have gone to a Raiders game and that it, it's always fun to go it's different when you go it's always go the pageantry of it and the, the drinks we yeah. like we like the drinks anyway uh I pleaded with our casino host to get tickets to this uh um you know they're the the Knights if you guys don't know if you're not following it the Golden Knights are now three to one against the Florida Panthers game five is tonight if they win it's all over they'll win the Stanley Cup and here's the news. Larry Flint's Hustler Club. <laughs> Fucking love this. This is Vegas, man. This Larry is Vegas. Larry Flint's Hustler Club, which we pass almost every single day. It's right off the 15, not too far from the Strip, just uh, south of Mandalay Bay. They're offering lifetime free lap dances to all the Golden Knights players if they win the Stanley Cup. Now, that's something. How now fun is that? Yeah. They'll get platinum VIP membership for life. If they win tomorrow, tonight, tonight. Yeah. Uh, if they don't win tonight and the Panthers win, there'll be two more games. So, right. So uh, at the end of the seven games, someone's going to win. <laughs> Is that an incentive for the, the players of the Golden Knights? Maybe. That they're going to get free lap dances for life? Maybe, but I also, I just I just like it because that like, that's totally Vegas. Speaking of sports, this is crazy. Uh, you know that college football plays all their bowl games or right around Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Um, for a couple of years now, it's been the the December twenty eighth game has been called the Cheese It Bowl <laughs> down there in Orlando. It's now being renamed the Pop Tarts Bowl. Love it. <laughs> From one shitty food to another. <laughs> Cheez Its isn't going away though. They're just moving to the New Year's Day game mm. at Camping World Stadium. Everything is named after a company or a product now. Money, man. Money. And don't they don't they have the Tostitos Bowl? I mean, if if you could get several million 
dollars a year to name this house, would you not have Cheez Its on the I'll on name the it. I'll lawn? name it whatever the fuck they whatever. <laughs> right. We can name the Swish Edition Studio the Depends Fit Flex Studio. It don't I, matter. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I will take your money. I remember the good old days when it was the citrus bowl and the cotton bowl and the yeah. sunshine bowl, and now it's all named after fucking products because right. that's the world we live in. Everything must be sponsored by someone. <laughs> Speaking of sports, I uh, got to say this. In our backyard here in our new house, we have a six-hole putting green, and every single hole has a PGA flag on it. Yeah. Those PGA flags are going in the trash. What the PGA did last week, I'm sure you guys heard about it. The PGA decided to merge with the Saudi-backed LIV mm -hmm. uh, network or tour or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, and people are not having it. No, they're not happy. The PGA head, his name is Jay Monahan. He said multiple times in the last couple of years that we'd never, ever get in bed with the people responsible for 9-11, the murder of journalists, uh, the atrocities against women and gays that happen over there in Saudi Arabia. And he, he said, this is just never going to happen. And then he fucking caved. Money talks, man. He called the LIV as bad. Is it live or LIV? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I know that Mika on I heard Morning Joe live. said live. Um, yeah. But I think it's LIV. Anyway, Jay Monahan said, called it just as bad as the Olympic Committee continuing to give the Olympics to China. Right with all their atrocities. But he caved, and people are not happy with it. There are a lot of people saying they're not going to watch golf anymore, and they're going to boycott any company that sponsors these new events, which is literally Lexus hey, and Mercedes. Rolex. And Rolex and all the luxury brands, plus some mainstream ones. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't someone, give a shit. I don't watch golf. I think it's very boring. Someone's going to make a new one. I, I just, and PGA will... It, they just It'll be go be away. Successful. Yeah. It's going to go away. I, I I can't believe that this happened. It's just it's an atrocity, man. Yeah, really, really, really horrible. This, my friends, is the Swish Edition from their secret underground studio. This is the Swish Edition. We got a mouthful for you guys. Dale and Scott are in the studio on the mics and. and, and Fired up the antenna. It has to come whether you like it or not. And if you're willing to show it, they'll take a picture of it. I actually think I might throw. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else in between, here are your new best friends. They're your hosts. It's very exciting for me because this is the best show ever made. Dale and Scott. Uh, right when we come back with our microphones on, someone rings the doorbell and the, do uh, and the dogs yeah. go fucking bananas. Right. It's probably Amazon because I think we've ordered like 95,000 <laughs> things from Amazon it's for this It's always new house. Amazon. And yeah. they finally have learned the sound of the doorbell. Yeah. All right. Talk for a second while I close this door. Okay. And here we go. I wish I remembered the lyrics to that Oreo cookie song. But I don't remember. I can't close the doors because there's too many boxes in the way. Well, anyway. it says someone. Oh, it is the mailman. The mailman came oh, to the door? Yeah. Oh, it must have been something we had to sign for. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Hey, uh, speaking of bizarre marriages uh, like the LIV and the PGA, um, Nasty Pig is doing a pop-up at Nordstrom's Men's Store in New York City for Pride Month. I saw this. This is so cool. <laughs> They're going to be weird. launching it's their so Season 23 Pride Capsule Collection. This is, if you guys don't know, Nasty Pig is a gay-oriented clothing company. Mm -hmm. They make things like ridiculous jock straps and body suits and onesies and uh Man, very sell, revealing top leather all bed kinds sheets of things. for god's sake right exactly i mean it's just crazy crazy craziness um i have a couple things from them mm -hmm. um 
but I, it's not something that I could even imagine that a store like Nordstrom would feature. No. I can't imagine they're going to do some of their more risque things at Nordstrom. It's anyway, weird. How did this even but, come about? Nordstrom is very upscale and conservative, so kind of... Well, and Nastapig's not cheap. It's not cheap stuff. <laughs> no, that's for sure. Anyway, I thought that was... I had to include that because I thought that was totally Yeah, I crazy. saw that, and I meant to tell you about it, but I think I got involved in something else, and then I totally forgot all about it. Speaking I of, mean, I kind of find it cool. It, no, it's fun, and I, I, I'm happy that they're doing it. And and we know the, the owners and the founders of Nasty Pig, great guys, um, and they've created a great brand yeah. for uh, the community. So we'll support it. Uh, I haven't been to Nordstrom in years, but I'm sure... <laughs> no. I think there's one here in Vegas, right? Isn't there one at the I'm fashion show sure. mall? Yeah, I think so. Speaking of vulgar, I don't know. I, I keep going back and forth on this, but... I don't understand someone who's 64 years old who constantly needs to push buttons all the time and be just nasty, nasty. And I'm talking about Madonna. She just recently teamed up with Sam Smith, who Sam Smith I liked when he first came out, and then he became kind of nasty and vulgar like Madonna. Yeah. For for just for the ratings, I guess, just for attention. I don't know why. They put a song together called... It's called Vulgar. <laughs> and they're obviously clamping, clapping back. Clapping? Is that what I, I meant to say? Yeah. At clapping. their critics who think that, one, they're too vulgar. And two, she's too old to be shocking and provocative. So oh. here's, here's a couple lyrics from the new song. Vulgar is beautiful, filthy, and gorgeous. Vulgar will make you dance. Don't need a chorus. Say we're ridiculous. We'll just go harder. Mad and meticulous, Sam and Madonna. Speak, bitch, and say your fucking names. Speak, bitch, and say our fucking names. Speak, bitch, and say our fucking names. Those are the lyrics to the song. Yeah. I, you know what? I don't like this kind of stuff. And I, I just think it's kind of vulgar for vulgar sake. And it's not saying that I don't like songs that have the word bitch in it or fucking or anything like that. I just think that they're going too hard with trying to be controversial i and and i'm i completely on the opposite end of that i don't i mean the song i don't know i haven't heard it it may be great i also like sam smith's recent song mama oh. don't know daddy's getting it's hot. horrible I it's about a, a married man <laughs> who's getting his dick sucked in an alley I think it's down fun. on the DL. I think it's fun. It's maybe it's, fun, it's, it's fun. a fun song. But what I don't like about this and why I hate Madonna and also why I hate Mariah Carey now is that these at least these two people are all up in your face and saying you must uh, you have to respect me. This is where right. I came from. No, that's I, that's I what am, I hate. I am this, and I will always be this. I am this reckoning, and yeah. fuck it, just go the fuck away. It, it's been almost thirty years now. You're not relevant anymore. So you're just so. You're that's be, the shit I hate. Like what? like this. Speak, bitch, and say my say our fucking names. Yeah. Uh, no, no you're not like. relevant anymore. I, I, Stop. I, I, I think I think stop. It's almost like what's it call at the magic show who demanding claps. Oh my god! It's it's on that same level. That made me f- it's so like, uncomfortable. You must recognize me and you must praise me he's because about, I am this person. He's talking about David Copperfield. Yeah. When he went to his show, and he wasn't getting the applause that he thought he should be getting for a trick, and he he forced it. He forced the audience to yeah. clap, and that's ew. It, it gave me this really weird uncomfortable feeling in my I don't get uncomfortable I get I was like uh, then I, I'm, I'm turned yeah, stop. off stop just I'm move off. move on to the next trick and that's you, where I am with Madonna and Mariah Carey the the two yeah. just need to stop or or just do your old stuff and stop with this new <laughs> bullshit I agreed in related news and this is related because a lot of people are, are critical of someone like Madonna who's 64 years old being the 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 vulgar person that she is uh jennifer aniston got really mad uh recently when people say you look so great for your age <laughs> which she's she she just wants she people to say you look great <laughs> right not you look great for your age but it, it all goes back to this pc-ness that we're living in now where you're not allowed to 
tell someone of a certain age that they're not allowed to do that anymore. So you basically, we were saying that Madonna shouldn't do that anymore because she's too fucking old to no, do that. It had nothing to do with her age. It's just because it's, it's her personality. Yeah. I don't like it. It's tiresome. Yes. It's tiresome. But Jennifer is saying, I look good. It doesn't matter how fucking old I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, look at someone like, I keep going back to Jacqueline Smith, who was one of the original Charlie's Angels. Mm -hmm. She's in her fucking 70s. She looks fucking amazing. She looks like she's maybe in her late 40s. All right. Well, I mean, you just you just don't add the for your age. For your age. You leave that part off. Yeah. But I, I'm constantly amazed by these people who look amazing who, and make themselves look amazing. Obviously, it takes money to look that way or it takes some effort to look that way some people don't bother obviously yeah. a lot of people don't bother but look at martha stewart she's in her 70s Great. upper 70s yeah. and she looks fucking phenomenal so you can do it if people you live want, life right if you want to if you want to <laughs> i like it when people look good it doesn't take that much effort does it little black eyeliner <laughs> some hair color that's all it takes oh god should blind people be allowed to go on a cruise by themselves? This is going to be a weird thing. It's weird. And I, I tested this this uh, topic. I, I test a lot of topics during the week on Facebook. And I also talk to friends about them just to kind of get someone else's perspective on an issue before we talk about it on the show. So I talked to Melissa about this. Melissa has been on a million cruises just like we have. Um. A couple of blind people recently were escorted off a P&O cruise that was starting from Southampton over there in England mm -hmm. because the crew realized after they got on board that they were both completely blind and they didn't have anyone else with them. It was right. just this couple, just both blind. Yeah. To me, it seems very dangerous. We've yes. been on many cruise ships. There's a lot of open stairs. There's a lot of things that you need to navigate. I, I don't know how you would do it. It could be dangerous. It yes. could be very dangerous. I would think that I would welcome them. All the cruise line should welcome them if they have a seeing companion as part of their party. Right. Not a dog, a, a person. It's a safety issue. Yeah. It recently also happened with a virgin voyage um, down there in Miami. This, this couple was kicked off because they were both blind. And when an executive found out what their staff did at the cruise port, he flew the couple on Virgin's dime to Honduras to meet the ship. And then Richard Branson got involved and mm. he sent a letter to them of apology and said, we're going to do better. Um, there's nothing in the cruise document that says you can't cruise if you're blind. Yeah. So they, they no. might need to think about this. Um, I wonder, R Richard Branson sent the letter of apology. Did he do it in Braille? I mean, how do you send a letter of apology to a blind person? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. But is is letting blind people sail by themselves a good idea? I, I just don't think so. What if there's an emergency and they need to get to their lifeboat? Yeah, lifeboat? Are they going to be able to find their way? Because you'd be relying on someone to help you get there. And unlike an airplane, which for one is much smaller. I mean, you're not looking at 12 decks of airplane, right? And that's what the... Uh, attendants are an airliner for right. for your safety to basically. get you off but the ships are different yeah. i don't know i feel ashamed i don't know why you would want to go on one anyway because i don't even know why blind people want to go on vacation <laughs> i mean they can't see anything they might as well just stay home <laughs> why would you go on vacation just to, was... just to see blackness somewhere else <laughs> why do we go on vacation because we do the same things that we do here just somewhere else gamble Drink and That's eat. That's it. That's Gamble, exactly drink what and we eat. do. So why do we even go anywhere? I don't know. We're, we're not going on vacation anymore. <laughs> Suits Sp me because traveling sucks Speak, nowadays. Uh, speaking of vacations, this might suck and it might not. Disney has launched a new $115,000 VIP tour. If you guys thought the $5,000 Galactic Hotel was expensive, this tour really rocks the boat. It includes all 12 parks. On a private jet. That sounds wow. like my kind of vacation. It's called Disney Parks Around the World. It's $115,000 per person, and you must go as a couple. Does it include food and drink? I don't know. 
It's a 24 day, six country, 12 park private jet experience that stops at the properties in California, Tokyo, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Paris, Florida, as well as non Disney landmarks, including the Taj Mahal and the the, the pyramids in, in Egypt. Wow. Uh, two trips are planned for this year. One starts on June 16th, which is just a few days away, and the other one starts on June 28th. This is 75 max people per trip on a VIP-configured 757. A doctor will go along on the trip around the world. How do you get that gig? That's great for the doctor, are right? Are blind people allowed to go? Blind people aren't allowed, because <laughs> that's stupid. Why would you go to an amusement park if you can't see it? Uh, the guests will get early park access, behind-the-scene tours. They'll get to skip all the lines. They'll get VIP seating for the fireworks, tours of Walt Disney Studios and Lucasfilm Campus. The tours start at Disneyland and end at Disney World. Minimum age, 12 years old. No fucking little kids. I saw a TikTok of a guy ranting, and he said that he believed that any adult who is infatuated with Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse, he believes they have a mental problem. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Melissa. Like, like, there's just people, it's not just, oh, I like it, but who are obsessed. Oh. With, like, obsessed There are tons with it. and tons of people that are obsessed with it, just like people are obsessed with Star Trek. I mean, there's people obsessed with all kinds of things. Yeah, but Star Trek is made for adults. Disney is made for kids. No, I don't think, I think people would probably say otherwise. It's a theme park. It is a theme park for kids, but it's for kids of all ages i think that's how they get away with it they say oh it's not just for kids it's for you mentally disabled adults as well oh my god <laughs> that's the politically polite and correct way of saying you have a mental problem it's kids of all ages uh apple <laughs> announced last week at their uh apple what was it their apple the thing? keynote the, the keynote. wwdc Apple has finally realized that when you write the word fuck, you don't mean duck. What I like about that whole keynote is when they brought this up is that they actually bleep the word. And unlike Apple, who is supposed oh to like, God. So like yeah. family friendly and will could dare say something like that. They actually kind of like said it and then bleeped it. So you knew what they were getting at. <laughs> Starting this fall, Apple products will no longer autocorrect the word fuck to duck. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally, after all these years. <laughs> we also finally know what McDonald's Grimace character is. You know Grimace. He's that big kind of, I don't know, tri triangle-shaped purple blob. Turns out he's an oversized taste bud. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> that is so stupid and funny at the same time. His birthday was yesterday. And Grimace is all in the news lately because his new Happy Meal is about to launch at mm -hmm. McDonald's and it includes a very, very vanilla shake, which is, of course, purple. Mm -hmm. And did you know, I didn't know this, uh, back in the day, I think it was in the 70s, uh, Grimace was introduced as a villain at the very beginning. But McDonald's quickly yeah, decided. Yeah, and the burglar. Yeah, they decided. Because he was like in prison straight. Yeah, they decided to change him into a lovable friend of Ronald McDonald. So you he's always been a happy character ever since. You don't see the burglar anymore. Hamburglar is back. We've talked about that on the show. He's, yeah. He sh he pops up every now and then. Mm. But where's Mayor, 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 Mayor McGee's? I like him. <laughs> Mayor. I can't say that word. Mayor. Mayor McCheese. You know, uh, Mayor Goldman here in Vegas is retiring. Maybe I should run for Mayor of Vegas. God, that's a fun job. You get to meet everybody. <sighs> uh, the world is running low on pink paint, it seems, because of the new Barbie movie. Bought so much of it for their sets. The production bought their paint from Roscoe, which is a supplier that s specializes in paint for film and theater production. And they completely depleted the global stock for the shade fluorescent pink. Wow. Every single thing in that movie is painted that color, apparently. The Margot Robbie Ryan Gosling movie opens July 21st. Have you seen the trailers for that? I've seen it. It's something that I don't want to see. It's either going to be a Hugh Mungo flop or it's going to be really big. Yeah. I just don't know yet. I it looks care. cute. I don't care regardless. 
Speaking of movies, we got news this past week that Hocus Pocus 3 is going to be a thing. The I'm whole not excited anymore. whole cast is returning. We were a little disappointed with Hocus Pocus 2. I yep. think we'll just keep watching Hocus Pocus 1 over and over That's again. That's it. Yeah. They ruined it. And finally, hell has finally, finally frozen over. No one in the entire world saw this coming. Dale doesn't give a shit about it, but Kim Cattrall, the actress who played Samantha Jones on the original Sex and the City TV show and the two movies, she is going to make an appearance in the second season of And Just Like That Aww. on HBO's Max. I, do you know this whole story? I I know of it because we talked about it on Binge Bum. Yeah, she swore that she would ne- she was forever done with the Samantha character. Uh, she apparently had an ongoing feud with Sarah Jessica Parker, although Sarah Jessica Parker kept saying, I don't know anything about a feud, and I don't know why Kim Cattrall hates me so much. So apparently uh, Kim said, I will do it, but I will not be in a scene with SJP. Mm-hmm. So... Um, She'll be in it. We don't know how for how long, but it's she gonna thought be... it wasn't going to make money, and it made money. So now she wants in on it. I think that's right. And her remember her ABC show that she did about the evangelist canceled. got canceled. Yeah, exactly. Although she is the voice of How I Met Your Father, mm. she's the voice. I can't pay that much. Uh, and just like that, season two returns on June twenty second. That's next week. I'm oh, very excited. Cannot freaking wait you're gonna be there with bells on <laughs> can i watch it in our new movie theater i don't care what you do because i'm not going with you dale and i have a movie theater i'm gonna watch it in there it seats eight uh but you can't come unless you uh pay you have a ticket you gotta pay uh poor marlon wayans um you know him. He was in White Chicks, which is yeah. one of my favorite movies of all time. He's he also, the most attractive way in. Yeah, he also does others. a lot of stand-up c- comedy routines, I guess. He pulled the race card this week, which I really hate because it had nothing to do with race. Uh, he ranted on Twitter that a United Gate agent wouldn't allow him to take his oversized carry-on on a plane and was kicked off. And then the police were called and he got a ticket. Ay, ay, ay. But let me tell you, this is this is how it goes. United and all the airlines either need to enforce the rules 100% of the time or don't. Because you could get the same bag onto an airplane 90% of the time, and there's that one stickler at the gate that's going to take it away from you it's and make someone you check it. It's someone who's doing their job, and it's everyone else who makes that guy look like a dick. But so, you shouldn't have it anyway. So he is calling for the United gate agent to be fired because of racism it has nothing to do with your it it had the fact that you had a bag that was too fucking big marlin right had nothing to do with the color of your skin so fucking stupid and i hate that and i hate that he went there yeah so dumb because it's unfair yeah well apparently he had three bags and he they made him combine it into one and then the one was massive (laughs) massive bag that wouldn't fit anywhere on the plane that's the story. Do you think someone like that would actually... I mean, I don't fly as much, nearly as much as probably Marlon Wayans does. I mean, what do we fly? Four times a year, max, maybe? Yeah, he probably flies every week. I know the freaking rules. Come on. Yeah, we know the rules. And you think everyone should gate gate check everything, right? Yeah, I'm waiting for the time where there is no overhead bin space. Everything goes under the plane. You get one carry-on, nothing above your head. Give everybody more breathing room. Let's roll. Let's roll. And speaking of rolling, we need to get out because we ran out of music. Oh, no. We should go. Let's roll. All right, we'll talk to you guys next week. Peace out, bitches. Bye. Say my name.